The arrest on sexual abuse and racketeering charges of Sean Combs, known alternately as Puffy or Diddy, sent shockwaves through the hip-hop world and is sparking vigorous debates online about who knew what, when, and for how long, and who else might have been involved. Combs insists he's innocent, but a judge rejected his lawyer's bail proposal because he had concerns that Combs might try to tamper with witnesses. Combs' downfall was years in the making and involved the abuse of Cassie Ventura, his former girlfriend, and others. According to a friend, according to friend of the show, Tere, who has new reporting on what led to the downfall of Diddy, Combs' descent into darkness was due in part to, quote, drug abuse. It's central to why he's now facing a mountain of serious charges. When Diddy and Cassie were together, he dragged Cassie down into addiction. After she left him, someone said, she went to rehab to get control of her life, which led to a process of healing, not just from the drugs, but from the abuse. From there, she found the courage to speak up. Joining me now is Tere, who, as I mentioned, has been reporting about Diddy on his Substack Culture Fries and on his Tere Show podcast. Tere, my friend, uh, talk about more that you learned about what led to Diddy's downfall. Well, you know, Cassie was recording an album for about 10 years. She made a ton of songs. She made collabs. She had producers. She thought she was actually working on an album. That was ultimately a giant pacifier to keep her happy while Diddy was actually using her for other things, right, for the freak-offs that we're talking about. The album never had a release date. It was never really going to come out. He was just using her for that purpose. So that's part of where you get into racketeering, that there's all these people that he's using in a business context to have her at his beck and call in this other nighttime context. And it's really disgusting, and he really robs her of her spirit and her time uh, that she could have used to become a great artist. And when Kim Porter passes away, and this is from a story that I'm working on for the Substack, they'll come out later this week. When Kim Porter passes, Diddy is so distracted and devastated that Cassie's able to get away from him. She gets mm -hmm. pregnant and she gets married, and then she's in a supportive environment. Her parents are around her, her husband, she has friends around her. She goes to rehab, and there she finds her voice to be able to speak up for the person she used to be. Right. When she was under his control, because she's not that person anymore. And when right. she gets to that place in her life, she starts to speak up because there's so many people who wanted to speak out against him and were afraid. And when she finds the courage to speak up about her truth, then others are able to come forward and then it all falls apart for him. You know, racketeering implies that there are more than one person involved, though. Is there and that is the question a lot of people are asking is who else is involved in this? There are other people within Diddy's operation who we can point to as playing a major role as far as security, as far as procuring things, as far as getting people into his orbit. Um, I would imagine that many of those people are currently talking to uh, of law, federal law enforcement trying to save themselves from going to prison. Others are sitting there nervous. Not everyone is talking, but surely some of them are. So, I mean, there's a lot of people lining up to tell the story, but I think a lot of the evidence is going to come from what Sean himself videotaped, right? That's yeah. going to be the thing. People think that's the thing that will get him out. No, he's not going to be able to say, this famous person came to my party and did something bad. Let's get knock a year off. No, no, that's not how it goes. No. Right? He, he's not going to be able to snitch his way out of this. That you covered, obviously, the R. Kelly situation. You interviewed R. Kelly. We've seen the Bill Cosby situation, the Harvey Weinstein situation. Those were situations in which you later find out, well, everyone knew about this. This feels very similar to Ray. So I'm just, as you're reporting on this story, it feels like this is another one of those cases where everyone knew just nobody said anything and no one you stopped know, it. One of the things that a lot of people who've been around him for a while are saying that there was a winnowing of the community around him where the people who might stand up to him were pushed away. The people who would say, hey, that's not a smart idea. That's not in your best interest. They were pushed away. And so, you know, you have some people who will take advice and some people who won't take advice, even though they think they are masters of the universe, right? He was one of those, like Elon Musk, like Donald Trump, will not take advice. And so yeah. while he's going down, there's probably, yes, men and women around him, but he also, if anyone might say, hey, this is a bad idea, yeah. they, they're out They'd of the out. circle. There you go. Uh, Tere, great reporting. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.